Shalom. Polor anons, borgă cât ne vin, diezerchi, mica mazuciun neren, antin, focciun neren. Nu mușcă, bișe, șantin. Mai e la bine. Că o ai cum a, tu că o ai, ping on, din hong, fai la. Nu-i satele, ce ne va, ce ne va, ce. Hai te lecă hute, am idee. Hello from the children of planet Earth. Borjo. Covering letter Ternum Nuncius is in many ways a kind of descendant of a body of work where an utterance, often an utterance from the past, becomes like the central image in the work. Uh, one can think of the public notice trilogy, for instance, which in the course of the 10 years, say between 2002 to 2010, became three works where a historical speech is really at the heart of, of the work. But then there's uh, Covering Letter 2012, which is a, almost like a predecessor to Covering Letter Terranum Nuncius, where the central image is really one of a letter, a letter written by Gandhi to Adolf Hitler just five weeks before the onset of the Second World War, urging him to kind of rethink his, his ways in the world. Covering Letter Terranum Nuncius, the recipient remains an unknown other so unknown and so afar that it's almost inconceivable because the, the recipient, intended recipient, remains an interstellar alien. And the contents of this letter unfold in the installation in, in sort of two or three different ways. One enters the space and there's the salutation, so to speak, there's the greetings. These are 55 greetings in 55 languages that sort of permeate the space. The other element in this work is this return address, you know, a, a map of our location in our immediate cosmic neighborhood where it was believed in 1977 that if 14 pulsars could point to where we are uh, that could get the recipient of this letter to us but clearly since 1977 we've known that there are a few hundred thousand probably a billion pulsars in our neighborhood so clearly no species are going to find us back on the basis of the 14 pulsars that were meant to signify our location and which also brings us to this question about our own sense of our location in the world. The images that sit on the table are essentially the images that were brought together by Frank Drake and Carl Sagan um, as a summary and evidence of our existence on this planet. Uh, these images weren't uploaded as images because in 1977 you couldn't upload uh, that many images on a disk. So these were essentially encrypted sound files which were recently decoded by a California-based programmer named Ron Barry. Uh, and in that process of their circulation from image to sound to image, they've lost detail, they've lost color, and they've become kind of abstracted. And these abstracted images then become a kind of starting point for me to sort of uh, find in them this, this kind of a three-dimensional world that slightly moves in the presence of a moving viewer. And the table kind of pulsates very slowly with light, almost as if it's calibrated to the speed of a calm human breath. And I think in, in covering letter Terranum Nuncius too, I think the possible journey of this entire message well beyond our own extinction, I think really makes us think about our time here. And I think it also opens up this question about how do you speak to the unknown? How do you speak to the afar? And that, I think, should make it a lot easier for us to speak to the one that's closer to us in a world that seems really divided in terms of how there's an absence of vocabulary when it comes to uh, ideological divides, whether it's left to right or religious differences or political differences and I think really to, to really think of the far as this distant other allows you to I think think of your immediate as really one in a way and I think in terms of this very very distant recipient I think all of us become a singular planetary sender 